Very good, we'll get started in one more minute. Um, thank you everybody for joining. Managed to do that all by myself. Very good. Um, let's see. Let's uh, get started. Everybody, uh, good morning. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for attending um, our uh, communications uh, business resiliency roundtable. Um, just as, as a form of introductions and uh, good housekeeping, please keep your mics muted and um, we are going to record this session. It will be posted on uh, the city's website and uh, we'll be sharing this information. Um, I want to um, thank our teammates that are joining us today. Our, uh, we have some uh, council members that have joined in today. Thank you for being here. Um, our plan is to um, essentially have a conversation, not just a presentation, but have a conversation on what is it that we can do to improve our communications, our social media presence with this COVID-19 more than ever. We now today have uh, the need to be more uh, technically proficient. Um, so, so with that, I would like to begin with the introductions. Michelle Bigelow is uh, our guru that is helping us uh, make sure that everything is recorded. And if we have issues, she's here to help us and to uh, help us manage the conversation. Uh, we have our teammates from Economic Development, John Lang, Olivia Nunez, um, I believe council member Carr is here and there's other folks that may be joining in throughout the, the day. And without further delay, um, we will turn it over to our fabulous, amazing team from Articulate Solutions, which is one of the teams that we use and we rely on heavily to help us uh, develop uh, better communications and, and whether it's advertorials, newsletters, um, flyers, so on and so forth. I'm hoping that they will tell us some good, um, some good tips for us to uh, learn, to take back to our businesses. And then towards the end, not only uh, we wanna open it up for questions and answers, but we would love to hear from the business community and see what they're doing to be successful in communications during this time. So with that, Thank you everybody for being here. I will mute my mic now and I will tr turn it over to Jason. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, am I able to share my screen? So now I get... You should be able to Jason. Um, Edith is going to okay. sharing on hers and then you can share yours. There we go. Okay. Sure. Okay. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the communications resources uh, webinar. Today's discussion, we're gonna keep it light. We're gonna give you a quick background of who Articulate Solutions is and what we do. And we're gonna share some universal strategies that can help you market during this time and provide some of our top suggestions for your communications. 
So Articulate Solutions has been in business nearly 30, 30 years. We're a full turnkey creative service agency, meaning we do pretty much everything, logo design, website design, collateral, social media management, um, PR, all of that. Um, we work for all kinds of different clients from local businesses to government agencies to international corporations. Uh, we are made up of an award-winning and diverse team of marketers, social media managers, designers, web developers, and communicators. Our portfolio includes a wide range of industries that we serve. Uh, we work with many local, regional, national, and global companies in all different various industries, including logistics, tourism, government, educational, theme parks. Um, the list goes on and on. Um, I am the Director of Communications at Articulate Solutions. I assist in a lot of the project management. Reminder to mute yourself if you can. We, um, I also oversee all the data and technical side of the agency, including all the website development, social media management, and uh, the media buys, including digital and traditional. And Angela, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Angela Menino. I'm the senior marketing strategist for Articulate Solutions. I drive the strategy behind what we do. I develop the strategic marketing plans for our clients, and I manage projects so that everything is delivered on time and on budget. And with my design background, I work really well with our design and web development teams to communicate ideas that really deliver ROI on our campaigns. Great, thank you. Um, so communication matters now more than ever. Um, I'm going to run through some, some data here that we'll use in the conversations later. Um, first thing is messaging matters. So obviously with this, this big change that we have, um, things are still up in the air. We're not exactly sure how things were cha will change, but it's a moving target and there are some universal strategies that will help impact your business right now. Um, as far as messaging, um, due to the data we have at the moment, there has been a lot of surveys of how people are going to interact with businesses, advertising messages, etc. during the shelter in place and after the shelter in place. And this graph here is just showing what feelings advertising should evoke um, during the shelter in place and after. You can see that the word safe has quite a bit of lead from the share of respondents. 23% of all the respondents felt that safe was one of the strongest words that we're going to have to utilize in our messaging. Um, that also includes not just messaging, but also imagery. When you're posting on social media, Typically, I know a lot of organizations have a lot of stock image galleries that consist of people close together, um, people hugging, people interacting sort of closely. Um, it's going to need to be looked at now because now with all the social distancing protocols, you're going to want to show that in some of your advertising depending on what it is so you're not tone deaf to what's going on. Um, as of right now, we've been noticing that a lot of images of close relationships um, get some negative feedback on social media, even if it's a picture of a husband and wife together. Um, some of the comments are, where's their social distancing? Um, so just keeping that in mind when you're, you're putting out your imagery, putting out your messaging, um, some of that will need to be adjusted. Um, you could even see that now with some of the national commercials from the really big brands out there. You'll notice they're using a lot of stock imagery on their TV commercials right now because, again, their libraries consist a lot of close people interacting with each other. So using stock galleries to get the social distancing visual and communicate their messaging now because they don't have the time to go out right now and actually do a full video shoot with all the different um, shelter in place uh, scenarios that are going on. So that's kind of the messaging. Medium also matters. Um, I know some of you are inevitably going to be facing budget decreases and you're going to need to evaluate which channels have the best ROI. Um, we highly recommend that you step back, take a look at all the different ways you communicate currently with potential customers and see which ones are driving the most engagement, which ones are giving you the best return on your investment, um, and what changes will you need to make during this new normal that comes up. Um, for example, if you're in uh, a business that typically relies on hosting open houses or, or holiday parties, you're going to need to rethink that um, because people, you're not going to be able to do those type of events. Um, this graph here shows the different channels of advertising. 
and what the advertising industry is expecting for a budget decrease within each of these. You can see the, the most in, impacted are traditional OOH, that means out of home, that's all your billboards, your buses, that type of advertising. Print's gonna be down, standard radio's gonna be down, but there is not a big of a cut in your paid search, which is your Google AdWords, your social and media, your in, engagement on social media is, is through the roof right now. So getting in front of people on social media, search engine traffic is up substantially right now. So getting in front of AdWords, getting in those search results. Um, and then also digital video and digital display, because as you are evaluating your ROI, typically you will see that your AdWords, your email, and your digital are gonna be your highest ROIs if they're set up correctly. And also the digital will allow you to work with a smaller budget in the future. Um, instead of just going out and putting on a big ad targeting a whole city or a whole um, a region, you can actually target people specifically. So if you're a restaurant that's doing takeout, you can now serve up ads to people who have used DoorDash in the last 30 days or have bought um, online food online or, or, or frequented restaurants and you're advertising to them. So you're spending your money wisely and hopefully getting a better ROI on your impact. And then lastly is medium matter. So I, I did just kind of touch on this, um, but I also wanted to show you a, a Google Analytics dashboard. Um, Google Analytics is a nice tool, it's free. You put it in your website and it, it tracks all this data for you. Um, and it can be a little intimidating at first, but it's really not. And I kind of wanted to show this here as an example. Um, this is one of our clients that came to us last year um, and, and we looked at their medium here, and this is the channel acquisition in Google Analytics. You can see on the left side, there's organic, direct, paid search, referral, social media, and email. So we get this and we look at it. We look at it as the e-commerce conversion rate on the right side. We look at what is gonna have the highest conversion rate. Obviously, we can see that the paid search is their top, one of their top performers at 5.97%. That means everybody that comes to the website, 5.97%. 5.97% of them actually convert into a purchase. Um, but some of the untouched possible um, areas of growth for this client that we noticed was the paid search and the email there that you'll see at the very bottom. E-commerce conversion rate is 22%, which is, um, is, is huge. It's only off of 176 users, so you have to take that data um, into account. But that's an area of opportunity. So this client started boosting their email traffic um, started sending out weekly emails, newsletters, sales for their products, and saw a big increase in their email traffic. They also put some more, more money into their paid search, getting those easy keywords for people searching for their business or their product and hopefully driving a conversion off of that. Um, so just kind of wanted to give you some ways you could look at your analytics and your data of your advertising so you can make better decisions as you're having to decide what to cut in the future if that applies to you. And next are some top suggestions for your COVID-19 communication strategy. Angela's gonna walk you through some different suggestions and strategies for social media, email, and your website. So I'll turn it over to her. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, what we're gonna go over next is basically how we apply everything Jason just went over to your different streams of communication. So let's start with your website. It's really important that you start with making your customers aware. We highly recommend posting a notice on the homepage of your website regarding your organization's approach to the shelter in place orders. Please be sure to check back frequently to make sure that that information is up to date. The last thing you would want is to have out of date information on your website. We do have research that shows website usage is up 28%, which means that more people are spending time on the internet, their home, they have their, a lot of people have their work computers at home with them. So they are surfing the web a little bit more than normal. Data also shows that people are more hesitant to buy online when a business doesn't announce that they're open. So if you are selling or continuing business online, we recommend that you announce that somewhere so that your customers will know and feel confident that they can make a purchasing decision with you. We also believe it is really important to create a resource page. Any organization can do this. Um, you just need to add a page to your website specifically for collecting all the relevant resources for your audience. Having this page means that you can send all your calls to action here and better track your analytics. 
Some of our clients have implemented this strategy recently and their resources page has become the second most popular web page. And there's a significant shift to desktop viewership and average session duration has increased. That just means that your audience and website users are spending more time on your web pages. Um, for example, one of our clients has a resource page and it's the second most popular page and the session duration was almost three minutes, whereas previously it was less than a minute. We also think that this could be a really good opportunity to reimagine how you sell. So since your customers can't come to you physically, they need to know how to get to you virtually. Does your website inform your customers how you can serve them? For example, restaurants can't serve people inside right now, but they are quickly adapting by offering takeout or delivery. You can even purchase alcohol to go right now. Fashion boutiques, as another example, likely aren't able to serve people indoors, but they can offer an online store where fans can shop, order, and have their items shipped all from the comfort and safety of their homes. Again, tapping into that messaging idea that Jason mentioned earlier, that safety is top of mind for people right now and will be for the foreseeable future. Next up, um, let's talk about your email list. We encourage you to check in with your customers as everyone struggles to adapt to the new shelter in place guidelines. It's a good idea to send a brief email to your customers and let them know that you're still working for them. Make it clear how you are handling the situation and how they can contact you. Other content examples that you could implement, um, what safety precautions are you implementing? Are shipping and delivery procedures delayed due to COVID-19? How are you serving your monthly subscribers while they aren't able to go out? So for example, wine clubs or gyms or car washes, those types of monthly subscriptions. Perhaps you've received a few calls with similar questions, so you can add that to your email or your website as a source of information. You could also take advantage of this time to manage your email list as well. Invite new people to join with an opt-in on your social media channels, and you could also remove inactive or invalid subscribers. It is important sometimes to clean house with your email list. If you have inactive or invalid subscribers on your, on your email list, it could skew your data. So this is time, this is a good time to go ahead and clean that up a little bit. We also believe that it's a good time to provide quality content that adds value. It's important to be proactive and share creative ways that you are serving your customers' needs, whether that's offering free delivery or curbside pickup, setting up an online portal to submit documents, sharing video content, offering virtual meetings, or providing additional services. Engagement rates in email lists are up by 50%, which basically means that people are reading their emails more frequently. For example, an example of how this might be applied, accountants or financial advisors can't book in-person meetings right now, but you can offer virtual meetings to continue managing those relationships with your customers. That human interaction is really important and proactive outreach can make them feel secure that you can be reached during these times. Really important that you could talk about that in your emails. And lastly, this one's fairly simple. Choose joy and promote positivity. If you are hopeful and positive, your customers will thank you for it. And they'll be more likely to turn to you when they're ready to begin making purchasing decisions again. They'll see you as an entity that cares and understands them. This is a basic branding idea. Think about how you want your customers to feel when they, in, when they experience your brand. Right now, the world needs hope and positivity. So emulate that in your emails and other streams of communication. Because with so much uncertainty surrounding our society, you can establish yourself as a source of calm and confidence for your customers, and they'll thank you for it. So let's talk about social media channels next. Number one, Jason mentioned this earlier, it's really important to be sensitive to the situation. If you have any previously scheduled advertising or social media posts, we highly recommend that you review the messaging to be sure that it does not come across as tone deaf given the circumstances. For example, it's important, like Jason mentioned, to not post photos with large groups of people gathered together. Um, even, like he said before, a photo of a husband and wife walking their dog at Harvey Bear uh, Ranch 
um, received some negative feedback. So we encourage you to really think and strategically about the images that you're posting as well. If it's possible, we encourage you to make changes so that you can still market your business in a positive way without seeming insensitive. It's important too to develop on brand messaging. So spend the extra time to create a messaging campaign that will unite all of your communication efforts. Accompany those strategic words with strategic images that visually inspire your audience to associate the solution to their needs with your organization. And even more importantly, have a purpose. You need to, we encourage you to develop a social media plan with ROI in mind. There's really no point in having an active social media presence if you don't have a plan. Every post should have some type of call to action that is trackable and measurable. Even if you're only looking to boost engagement, plan for that and track it so that you can make informed decisions later. You can compare different approaches too to see what works best for your business. It's not a bad time to test out different, different ideas. And lastly, consistency is key. A lot of people think that now they shouldn't be posting on social media for right now. But we actually believe the opposite. Even if your doors are currently closed to the public, that does not mean that you should stop all social media. Now more than ever, organizations should be extremely active on all their profiles because the general public is online more than normal. You can still be a source of inspiration and joy for your audience no matter what you do. So just to give you some basic data, Facebook usage is up 26%, Instagram usage is up 15%, and Twitter usage is up 14%. And those are just the top three. There's many other social media platforms that you can be taking advantage of. Furthermore, your company voice should be consistent. It's important that your customers feel like they can trust your brand wherever they interact with it. You want people to be able to see your brand in different places and know that that's the same brand, not just visually, but also tonally. It's important that you have the same tone across all platforms. And lastly, let's talk about just some overall business development strategies that you can start implementing now. Start with evaluating your brand position. The world truly has changed for good. Some things may not go back to the way it was. Um, is your brand prepared to stand firm in this new world? Perhaps it's time that you, re that you invest in rebranding. You could also take this time to update your website completely. Web trends change every year. And if you haven't updated your website in the last two years, you're already behind, not to mention the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. If you have the time and the resources, now could be the time to refresh or redesign your website altogether. You may even want to start a blog, or you could restructure it altogether. Basically embrace that spring cleaning mentality. And lastly, something that we at Articulate are implementing ourselves, um, among other things, it's important to invest in things that you don't normally have the bandwidth for. So for example, training. It's a good time to invest in new education for every level of employee. Training your team in new areas, updating workspaces, etc. If you have resources tucked away and are confident about your future, use this time to get a competitive edge and come out of the shelter in place with the lead position. There are a ton of low cost online training programs and paint itself doesn't cost a lot either. So it doesn't have to be expensive. For example, if your team has skills like writing, this could be the time to build out your marketing materials. Everyone from the CEO or president of your organization to your custodian can learn something new to benefit your business in the future. All right, Jason, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Okay, um, thank you everyone. That went a little quicker than we anticipated, um, but we hope this presentation was helpful and encourages you, encourages you during this challenging time. Um, if you find that you need support in any of these areas, um, we are just one of the many local creative agencies that offer marketing and advertising services. So I think at this time we can start taking questions if there are any. Sure, thank you for the information. <clears throat> 
I'm going to ask Michelle to now make everybody who's on the call to be a panelist so we can see them if they choose to be seen. Uh, but in the meantime, while she's doing that, I will start with the first question from Deborah. Um, she says, how do we advertise and sell things designed to support positive mindset without feeling like we're taking advantage of COVID-19? That's a, a tricky one. Um, it, it, it's hard. You can see, like, like for instance, the some of the car commercials lately aren't, in my mind, doing a great job of it. They're saying that, yeah, we're here, we'll help you with financing, but still come buy a car and we'll do no financing or no interest rate for 60 days or something like that. Uh, but there are other organizations that are doing it well. Um, one that I was reading about the other day was um, Fanatics. It's a, a sports company. And they aren't necessarily selling their products and merchandise right now. What they're doing is they're getting, be whoop, getting behind other organizations that are helping during the COVID-19, um, not necessarily putting their product right in their face, but showing that they're supporting in other ways and showing that they're supporting their community. Um, it, it's going to be tricky. You can't go out there with just a hard sale message at this, at this time. Um, you really need to take people's emotions into account. Um, so right. it's not going to be a hard sell anymore. I'm not sure if Angela, you I have anything. That's, that's I a haven't great been question. advertising. I haven't advertising my bracelets and things because I feel like it's a taking advantage of anybody who needed that extra something going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I am doing other mm -hmm. community service projects. Um, happen to be making masks right now. Uh, but I, yeah. so I feel like if I advertise selling bracelets, even if it's a sale or anything, that I feel. Like it's it's hard because the idea is to encourage people to have positive mindset. That's what it is in the company. My intent's been doing an amazing job of all these free, positive inner journey workshops and yogas and meditations and all these wonderful, amazing things. And we're even doing a stamping for frontline workers soon. But it's hard to then try to sell to the community because I feel like I don't want somebody to buy a bracelet because they feel the need to have something empowerment during a challenging time. So selling anything right now. Yeah. I I think yeah, I think that's a really great point. A really great question, Deborah. Um, I have a good friend who is a cookie maker and decorator here in Gilroy and Morgan yeah. Hill. She serves um, events. People order cookies for events like birthday parties or weddings. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, we yeah, missed the probably... cookie decorate. We missed it for him. The cookie <laughs> decorating package. <laughs> yeah, well, she she does those. She reimagined how she sold, and she created these in-home do-it-yourself kits. And she's doing really well. She is sold out every time. So I, I don't think it's wrong for you to try to sell. You're still a small business and you still need your income like other businesses. And right. there's a way for people to support you. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with selling your bracelets, especially because Mother's Day is coming up. Um, people still want to buy gifts for their mothers. So okay. I think that's a good idea. You could, you could start advertising in that, in that vein as well. And I was thinking too, too of trying to do some in-home kits if people want to get yeah. a kit and then get online and I'll teach them how to make a bracelet or something. They can make their own yes. bracelet. I see know. lots of people in your position also teaching classes on Zoom. So perhaps you could package up some some jewelry making kits that parents can do with their kids. That's another big That's what thing I was thinking. to tap into. A lot of parents need ideas of things to do with their kids, keep their kids busy. And it's something that they can do as a family. Um, so right. you could also not only sell the kit, but um, sell a class as well. And it doesn't have to cost too much because, you, you know, people, a lot of right. people. No, I was going to keep paychecks, it like really but, inexpensive. I have a but, lot of you know, pieces. Yes, know your value, know your worth, but um, also be sensitive to the situation too. Right. Hey. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so I, I realize here that we have Brittany Sherman, shout out to the Chamber of Commerce. She has uh, just blown me away with her creativity uh, to immediately jump on, on getting this takeout uh, social page. And overnight she created this page and has like 3000 followers or something like that. Um, she's also doing the virtually uh, virtually congregate, don't isolate, virtually congregate, uh, something like that. And it's also another kind of form of being providing um, 
positive stuff. Brittany would love definitely to give you the platform to, to talk about that. I'm not putting you on the spot. I also have uh, Carrie Wallace with the Downtown Association, and they're doing some stuff to support the downtown businesses. Um, so, but before we, so I would love for Carrie and Brittany to talk about what you're doing to support your business groups, because um, there's some really creative stuff out there. So, but before you do, I'm going to, I'm going to put a, a couple of questions out there that I think about all the time. So for us, uh, from the city side, as a government agency, there's just so much information and our, our resource pages are just like super lengthy and it becomes uh, difficult to digest so much information. You, Articulate Solution, have been helping us develop this newsletters to provide a little bit more bite-sized information, whatever we think is just the highlight. And I think that has been pretty well received. Um, I think that maybe the strategies are different for the different organizations. But what I find in many of our um, groups, nonprofit groups or smaller business resource groups, their websites really don't have the resources. They, they, have been, they haven't been touched in many, many years. They don't have a whole lot of resources to even invest in that. So I guess um, my question is this, what would be your best advice for someone that really needs to revamp their website, but has no resources to do so? <laughs> At the end of the day, there's no money. So what is your very best advice to provide that? And, and then the second question you can think about this is, on the social media platforms, it's hard to be everywhere unless you really know how to be everywhere. And is there a social media platform that works better for some groups than others? And if there is a social media platform, what would you think would be the best platform for a type of business? You talked about Facebook increasing, but before COVID, we saw Facebook not necessarily increasing, but we saw a lot more uh, Instagram and other platforms be much more uh, popular. But right now, I think there's a need for social convenient social interaction that that Facebook provides better than others so again in the context of social media platform do they need to be everywhere is there a platform that works better for a type of business or not and the folks that we have here on the call include event organizers and again our, our support group for downtown and Chamber of Commerce and um, and also visit Morgan Hill um, with that I will let you guys start with whatever you have. And also uh, at some point, I love Brittany to, to ch chat about what has been successful for you. And Carrie, if you want to jump in as well. Thanks. So on the, the social media side of things, um, typically during this time, Facebook is probably going to be your best bet. I'm hearing the events and the, and the government organizations. Facebook does have the biggest um, user base, even though Instagram has had quite a, a trend up, Facebook still has the majority of the user base. It also will depend on your audience too, because of the age of your audience, it also will impact the platform. Um, Instagram typically skews uh, a younger audience, whereas Facebook's a little older. Um, the thing with picking the right medium or the right channel for your, your organization, is again checking the audience but also if if you're um let's say an event and you're trying to promote an event but maybe it's a first time event and you don't have a lot of images instagram's probably not going to be the way to go because you need to have lots of curated images all the time so if you don't have the resources for the imagery it, it's almost in a sense not worth the effort i would rather put my effort back into facebook share the few images i have set up facebook events which are usually pretty popular um, and you can also share that and, and, and build on it. Um, so that's kind of what I would say on the social media side. On the website one, um, it's a little tricky depending on how your current website is set up. Some easy things you could do is again, if you have Google Analytics or some kind of analytics in there, go look at just what the most 10 popular pages are. Sometimes you may find that you're, there's a page on your website that's maybe buried down in the navigation or three levels deep, but it may be like the third most popular page on your website. So maybe it's just some restructuring of the navigation, getting some easier links to those more popular sections. 
Um, there's also some great tools out there to build a website of your own. Um, I realize some organizations may not have the budget to go out and, and hire an agency to build a full custom website all programmed. Um, there's some great tools like Wix, WIX.com, Squarespace that offer a lot of great um, websites, they're, they're in a sense template builders, but they're all drag and drop. You don't have to know any coding to get a website up. They'll help walk you through the whole process. And if you have the time right now, might be a good time to try to take a stab at it. There's lots of online resources. YouTube's a great one. Go watch some YouTube videos on how to learn how to interact with like, like Wix. Um, it's really easy and you could just drag and move things around, drop your images in, build your mobile view. Um, and you can sometimes get that going with just some few hours of investment and time. And Angela, I don't know if you have anything else on the social media side that maybe I missed. I think you pretty much covered it. I think the most important thing is knowing your audience um, and knowing what industry you're in as well. So not all industries need to be on Instagram and not all industries need to be on Facebook. Um, I will say that Facebook and Instagram are super connected. Facebook owns Instagram. So a lot of times you can push to both platforms with one button. So keep that in mind too, as you're deciding which one to choose. Very good, thank you. I, you know, while they are, you can push to both, I just find that the content is so different, right? It, like you said, it, it, Instagram has to be curated. And from, from our Choose Morgan Hill side, not having necessarily the resources to consistently have a presence, I feel that you put in a lot of effort when you have a little bit of resources, an intern, a fellow, and it, it, it kind of grows and then, phew, it drops right back down because there is just not that consistency. So I appreciate uh, the thoughts. Uh, Brittany, tell us what you're hearing from your businesses. Tell us uh, if, if you're ready to unmute, <laughs> you may have a kid in the background. <laughs> um, tell us, tell us what, um, what, what is working for you and any questions you have that, that can help your businesses. Sure. Hi, everyone. Brittany Sherman, CEO, President, Morgan Hills Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me take the stage, Edith. <laughs> um, the, one of the first two things that we did was actually create what we call the Morgan Hill Takeout and Delivery Facebook group page. So we started that up, you know, invited all of our member restaurants, and then I believe sent that out to the city, and then they invited the, the whole wealth of restaurants that we have in the community, had them sign into that and then they can post specials, gift cards, you know, all kinds of different things. And then we encourage anybody who actually purchased the takeout to post a picture or a thank you. And it's just really blown up. We have now over 3000 followers on that page, which is fantastic. And most of, most of the people who do follow it have asked that we continue it uh, once restaurants do open back up. So lots of enjoyment, lots of interaction there. Um, and then in in an effort to kind of engage some of our non-restaurant businesses that would be, you know, retail, dance studios, those kind of things. Um, we created the Don't Isolate Virtually Congregate page. A little bit slower moving on that one. <laughs> We've got about 265 followers there, but really, really fun activity and engagement, all meant to be extremely positive. Um, we have one, one nonprofit that has horses and they take a super fun, cute video about the horse talking about, you know, what they like in their mane and all this, stuff. and the kids love it. It's just a really great positive thing. Um, we've got an artist that goes on there and every Friday they do kind of a virtual paint night type thing. So just a lot of really great content, content and feedback. The residents like it, the businesses like it. Um, so we've, we've um, seen much success for both of those programs. And um, as far as our businesses go, I mean, for the most part, everybody has switched to, to just all their efforts online, all of the marketing, you know, it, social media is king. So that's, that's pretty much what everybody's focusing on. Um, the other thing I've heard, I'm not real savvy with Google, but I've heard a couple presentations mentioning that and a grow with Google program and, and things like that to really hone in and focus on that. So we're at the chamber now transitioning from kind of a, a let's survive this to now a once you reopen, let's make sure we have the right tools in place. And so I think marketing and social media and the website, all of the, those things are going to be very important. So, I mean, I take this information and I send it back over to them and, um, any other kind of hints, tips, or tricks that you guys think, everybody thinks now, you know, oh my gosh, we've been home for six weeks, we're going to be home another two weeks, but it goes by so fast, and you look back, and you happen to think, why didn't I work on my website? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that during this time? So if there's any things that maybe in the next two weeks, when we hope that things can start opening again, that you would really encourage businesses to focus on now in preparation to be open.
Um, I would encourage you to, if you don't have the time to look at your website, at least look at your social media channels, look at your listings too. Um, if you're a, a, a retail business, look at your Yelp pages, your Google listings, get all those up to date, make sure the hours are current. Again, on there, communicate your, your COVID-19 hours as well, or your, your essential business hours. Um, it's a great, it's, it's good to update all that. Sometimes it's easy to forget about those, how many different little profiles are out there. Your Facebook profile, sometimes just making sure you have the right website URL, because sometimes the little about section on your Facebook doesn't get touched for several years. Um, so just some of those are, are easy little things to, to check up on. Um, I had another one, but I, I lost it at the moment. I'm not sure if you have another one, Angela, if it comes back. I don't think I do. I, I think, you know, both Gilroy and Morgan Hill are really doing a good job of supporting the community, their communities and supporting their businesses. So, uh, you know, basically what you just said about that uh, takeout and delivery group, you know, people want to pour into the community. They um, are looking for something to belong to. They're looking for something that'll bring them joy and hope. So what you're doing is great. Um, just essentially everything you said, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Monica, and I'm I'm really grateful for for this um, platform that you know you guys put on, and it's given me a lot of great ideas for my business. Um, I own a legal document services business, and um, I am I'm it's in Gilroy, but I serve the entire entire Santa Clara County um, area. And what I'm doing is offering free healthcare directives and power of attorney preparation of those documents because there's you know it's uncertain times right now, and some hard decisions should be made, and it, it's kind of a morbid thing to try to talk about with some people, but um, I, I, I know that that's also something that is necessary and um, th things that people need to discuss with family members. Um, I am using Facebook and Instagram to push my business um, and, and it's doing pretty well here in Gilroy, but I'm, I'm trying to like push to Morgan Hill and San Jose, um, but I'm not quite sure and I'm hoping maybe I can get some ideas on how I can get my information out to those markets and maybe somebody has an idea that can help me monica though i have a quick question how are you doing it when it has to be like signed by two people witnesses and things like that um all of it can be done electronically i have um adobe sign and um I, everything can be done electronically just curious anyone i um monica i think that's pretty incredible um that you're offering that that's very generous and um i'm thankful for that I definitely think that's an important conversation and you're doing a great job, like you said, with Gilroy. Um, maybe you already are implementing this, but hashtags are a pretty powerful tool on Instagram and Facebook. They kind of double as, an, as a search engine optimization type of tool, but it doesn't, it doesn't go to Google. It's just for Facebook and Instagram um, and other social channels. But you can also um, be choose, be, maybe look at your keywording on your website and make sure that everywhere you can where it's appropriate that you're saying that you serve Gilroy, Morgan Hill, San Jose, the Santa, the Santa Clara Valley. Think of what your potential customer or your ideal customer or client would be searching for right now. And come, like think of those phrases and put those phrases in words on your website too, not just in hashtags, but in on your website. So when I, I, I own a business in Gilroy, Morgan Hill too. And what I do when I'm looking for hashtags is I'll go to Instagram and I will type in a, a hashtag or a phrase that I think someone might search and see how many users are using that hashtag. That can help boost your visibility on both Instagram and Facebook. Um, but you can also implement the keywords for Google, for your Google search engine optimization. Great, thank and you. Google Trends, and Google Trends is a good place to look for that kind of information on the Google side of things. You can see what keywords, hashtags are trending as well. They may give you some ideas for different ways to target. Um, if you're on Facebook and Instagram too, it's sometimes a little tricky with legal and health, but if you're boosting, you can actually boost to people, you know, within, if you know, they're within a certain age or you're targeting Morgan Hill, you can say people who live in Morgan Hill that are this age and, um, and you could try to target that way. There's, if you do a digital campaign, like something with a Google, you could even do more granular. You could say people who have looked for legal services in the last 30 days, things like that. So you can start getting into more of that as you try to expand. Um, and again, the listings that I mentioned earlier, those online listings, 
if you have your business in Gilroy, you still want to mention on those listings that, that you're in Morgan Hill and serving Morgan Hill in San Jose because Google looks at the listing on the Google side and, and will pull that into your SEO as well. So just trying to make sure you capture it everywhere you can. Thank you so much. I, those are definitely things that I hadn't thought about. So I appreciate your insight there. So um, what about branding? So in the context of more than ever, if you don't have a brand by now, you're sort of late. Um, if you don't know how to use social media and you don't have a good website, you're already late. But here you are and you got to do something. So um, tell us a little bit about branding. Tell us a little bit more about um, how do you distinguish yourself when there's so much noise out there and you're just kind of coming late to the game. So how do you add value to the conversation out there? How do you distinguish what you are offering uh, in a way that is genuine? Um, any thoughts on that? That is a really great question. Um, I, we are big believers that it's never too late. Um, I, you know, get started now. We have the time, so get started now. And contrary to popular belief, a brand doesn't equal a logo. Your brand is more a feeling that your audience gets when it interacts with your company. So that's what you want to start researching. I would start with research before you go and redesign a logo. Because you, the last thing you want to do is spend hours and dollars redesigning your logo and website if you don't have a, an idea or a grasp on your brand. So start thinking about like how your customers and clients feel when they interact with you and how you want them to feel when they interact with you. Um, allow your allow your brand to be shaped by your customers and then you can kind of you can kind of work around that and direct them in the direction you want them to go because ultimately you don't decide um, you don't decide off the bat what you want what your customers feel because they're going to choose that when they interact with you so if you want your customers to feel safe or valued or empowered use those words to define and inform the decisions you make going forward eventually you could come up with five to ten really awesome key descriptive words that could then inform how you design. So just start at start at the basics and get to know your customer and get to know what they are thinking and what they feel about your brand and build up from there. That's just kind of the starting point. Jason, do you have anything you want to add to that? No, I think you kind of touched on, I mean, knowing your audience is, is really key to a brand. Um, and it isn't just a logo. It's not like Apple computer. You don't look at that little Apple symbol as their brand. It's everything about it. It's their product. It's the way you feel when you walk into their stores. Um, it, it's all of that. So if you have a brand that maybe hasn't been touched in a long time, it may be good to do some of that research on what is my ideal customer look like? What does my current customer look like? And does my brand represent that customer? Um, this is a bit of a stretch, but if you started a company and you say you were really focused on sports and male type things, but now you've kind of maybe moved into ladies active wear or something like that, you want to make sure that your brand touches on it. You're not having a very masculine brand feel. So maybe a good time to look at the colors. Colors can evoke a lot of emotion too. So looking at those keywords and making sure that your colors tie into that as well can help your brand. Yeah. And I remember, sorry, Edith, you said something else about, um, knowing your niche and being genuine, I, we really believe that it's okay. It's totally okay and great to be uniquely you. It is important to know your competition just because to, to make yourself aware, but don't let what other people are doing tell you what to do. Um, you know your business best, you know your community best. Um, use that as research but and let it inform what you're doing. Um, I wanted to give you an, a, a quick example um, comparing Walmart and Target. Um, they are functionally the same um, business, but they're a completely different brand. And that's because people have different experiences and feelings when they talk about each brand. So it, if you've ever shopped at Target um, in the past, you might have ever, maybe you've used the phrase, I'm going to make a Target run. I don't know if anybody's ever said that. In the last two years, they've actually been marketing Target runs everywhere in their stores and on all of their um, advertising. There's big, bold letters that say Target run and done. That was built by the community of Target, not Target company itself. So that should give you an example of how your community is going to start living that brand and build into that, lean into that, because that's what's going to bring in that revenue later on. 
Thank you. Um, again, if people have questions, either put them on chat, put them on the question section, or just uh, uh, unmute your mic. Otherwise, I'm going to keep on asking a few questions uh -oh. to manage of the resources. Can I just jump in? Because I had a question too. Is when you're talking about advertising you know, um, with Monica, I had the same thing of I've been wanting to start, you know, doing the online classes, but I didn't see how that my product would be distinguishable from anything else. And that's kind of, I guess, probably my biggest two things. I one I another question too, but that was one of the things that I was thinking about. So thank you for that thought. But the other question that I had is prior to COVID-19, um, co uh, at the same time as uh, the Magical Bridge coming down here, I was going to be starting a uh, nonprofit uh, STEM program for kids. And I've been putting that on hold. Is that something that I should wait till after COVID before trying to initiate it? Suggestions, <laughs> anybody? how to communicate with parents and things about projects for kids to do. I actually think that's a great thing that you can start building out. Now's a good time to start build, uh, build that out because like okay. I like we mentioned earlier, um, parents are looking for things to do with their kids. And I've been seeing on, on the news, a bunch of um, small businesses that are offering classes over zoom, even high school classes and middle school right. classes are over zoom. You have, yeah. the world is your oyster. Like you can be really creative. And I, I was going to say to something you just said a minute ago, what distinguishes you from you, from everybody else is you like you as a small business owner and probably your only employee, you are what sets your product apart and who you are and how you make your customers feel is different than how so-and-so makes their customers feel in their business. So maybe spend some time figuring out how you can tap into that um, to set yourself apart and believe that being authentic is a better strategy than anything else thank you yeah I, and i originally i was going to separate my steam from my crafting for a cause but i didn't know if that was really the time now i mean i actually have finally a board of people but we haven't before i filed paperwork and so it's kind of my my feel my, my my page is all jumbled i feel like because i have too much on there i have my crafting and i have my card making and then i have that so i was trying to get some guidance on that. Thanks. Appreciate it. It's very helpful. Yeah, and I think the STEAM program is great, or the STEM, whichever one. Um, we work in the theme park industry, and obviously that's pretty heavily hit, like tourism. People aren't going to be going back to theme parks soon. So right now, um, some of our clients are working on educational components, um, coloring books, activity resources, nature activities, to kind of pull on that educational component while kids are at home, and it helps take some of that pressure off of the, the parents while still interacting with the brand. But I think it's a great time to do all that. There's a really fun art uh, kits that I should tell you about that you can combine with the theme park and steam together with electronics. I'll tell you about it later. Thank you. I assume you guys are busier than before. I am hearing from other marketing firms that, you know, they are busy because this is the best time to do the, the brand refresh and what have you. A, a couple of questions and a comment here. Um, I have Council Member McKay saying, I will always listen to the folks at Articulate Solutions and take them seriously. We have a lot of great resources and they are definitely one of the best. They know their business. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member. Uh, we definitely appreciate. Um, so a little bit of a plug uh, for the people on the call. Uh, Articulate Solution is doing this uh, webinar for free. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the partnership. And for folks that are looking for resources, we find them affordable. We find them accessible. We, want, we find them fast. Like, like they're efficient and they turn stuff around, especially for someone like me that, that kind of is always running around doing last minute stuff and wanting it all. <laughs> With that, I, I will ask a question. Um, so I, I've seen, I don't know if she's still on the call, but what about for event, uh, yeah, Maddie, you're still on the call. So for example, what, what about for folks that have events and those events are just, you know, a time and space. And right now with, with things being so uh, uncertain, events getting canceled, you don't even have a message out to the community. You don't even know if you're going to have your event, whether it's a music series, whether it's Poppy Jasper, whether it's what have you, 
what is the best advice in this very uncertain world when you don't really have a message out to your investors, to your participants, but you don't want to lose touch with that relationship? So I'm asking that question for Maddie and maybe even for Brittany, but if you guys feel free to rephrase the question if there's a better question for you. And Maddie, you, you need to take to this one, Angela. Uh, if you wanted to speak, Maddie, you needed to unmute. This is a great question. Um, feel free, Maddie, to interrupt me if you um, want to elaborate a little bit. Um, I actually work as a wedding photographer on the side, so many events that I normally would have been involved in over the last few weeks have been canceled, and it, that's just such a tough. It's a really tough um, industry that's being hit, not just weddings, but all mass events. All the concerts that were planned for this year have been canceled. And it's just when shelter in place lifts, that doesn't mean that people are going to be ready to go back to theme parks or events. Even um, I've even seen research um, showing that Disneyland won't even open before end of August, which is crazy to think about. Um, so I think there's this is just an opportunity to think outside the box. How can, let's say this is the Poppy Jasper Film Festival, how can you get those films to people? How can you create an online conference that people pay to be a part of? I've, I've participated in conferences like that before, and you get exclusive access to a portal where you can watch videos, you can be a part of panels, you can listen to Zoom conferences. If you had a panel, a film panel, that was going to be speaking on the subject of um, of horror films, for example. I don't know, I've never been to a film festival, but I'm guessing well, they have I, something like that. Go ahead, Maddie. I don't mean to interrupt you, but um, but we already are working on that. Um, we oh, really good. had to rethink the film festival, and um, there's an incredible amount of resources out there. Every major film festival, um, I mean, there's almost 10,000 in the world. They're all thinking like this, and we're we're not planning just for the next six months, we're planning for the next two years mm -hmm. of how do we take all of our content, all of our industry professionals, our educational programs, and um, how do we stay connected to our audience? And um, so we're working on our building our database, pulling it together, and there's this really great platform with our ticketing, we have a ticketing platform, and now they have a virtual platform so we're gonna be doing what you were talking about. Um, we um, probably gonna make an announcement in about a week, um, but basically what we're gonna do is gonna do weekly screenings and um, we're gonna, like for instance, we have these great animated short films. So we're gonna take them and, and some of the filmmakers and they're all over the world and um, have a Zoom meeting with Dory Welsh, who's the director of recruitment for DreamWorks Animation. and. Wow. And so we'll show the films and then she'll talk to them about their films. And, and so we're just being really, really creative. And the industry, people in the industry are so happy to be, uh, and help us and, and work with us. And um, so we just, you know, we had 205 films from 38 countries and, you know, 20 industry people coming. So um, we have the content and um, we're a 15 year film festival. So we have even more than that. So it's going to be uh, picking and choosing what's best for our audience, but also um, n knowing like certain films, ha you have to do geo blocking where you can only show it in California or um, so we'll have to like decide there's a lot of decisions that have to be made so that's why we're, we're we're taking our time with it so that once we we know exactly what we're doing we have a schedule set we'll, we'll announce it but yeah we're on it and we're super excited and um there's just there's so much opportunity out there and so many resources and um i really want to thank you guys for doing this webinar i mean this is how i sort of learned i learned from others and uh so i really appreciate your time yeah thank you you're welcome. I think you're doing everything right. That's a great, uh, great example of how to be creative, um, even if it's hard, because um, there's, like you said, geo blocking and ticketing and everything like it's, it can be challenging, but it'll be worth it. And you're doing a great job. Uh, so a question from the chamber side. I mean, we run three major events in the community. The first one, the Celebrate Awards Dinner, which we actually had two weeks prior to the shelter in place order. So we were able to, you know, get through that and get through it successfully. 
um, we run a 12 week Friday night music series, which is set to start June 12th. So <laughs> if Disneyland isn't opening until August, we're probably not going to be allowed to the Friday night music series in August. Um, but I mean, we, we have the ability to be able to shift those dates because it's not one weekend, it's, it's 12 and we can start later and end later, you know, so we have flexibility with that one. Uh, we also host the Taste of Morgan Hill, which draws about 50,000 people over one weekend, which is the last one in September. So we're kind of, we had this very similar discussion kind of to what Maddie was saying, like, okay, if we can't have a music series, can we do something where we have people log in and pay to watch the series, but then how do we pay the artists and you know, so I don't know, we're just going through, you know, trying to work through all these crazy ideas for them. It's, it, it's extremely difficult, and I think Maddie has done a fabulous job with what they've been doing with Papa Jasper, so kudos to you uh, for that. Um, but just wondering if, you know, you guys have any other ideas. The other thing I've heard a lot, too, is that a lot of the event organizers are scared to push anything out because they don't, though the message would be positive, they don't want to feel, they don't want people to receive it as insensitive. So can you kind of talk about that, like kind of gray area of messaging for a minute? I was just say real quick before they talk about that, about the concerts. We've been doing weekly, well daily, on the Magical Bridge Foundation site. Now they're not as big as their concerts and stuff, but uh, we, we have little stipends for them and then they have a tip jar kind of a thing. And then they, they are volunteering, so, I mean, so it's not like the amount that they would probably normally have gotten had they been at the park itself. But then people, like yesterday, people are actually posting, hey, where's the tip jar so that I can give to this person? And then also linking to the classes that they offer. And honestly, we have been, it's been blowing out the roof, the amount of people that have been coming to the classes and the, and the things. And like I did my, host my first webinar with them last two weeks ago and I had 80 people within one day notice coming on onto it. And we've had over 7,000 people look at it since posting the webinar. Uh, so that is an option. I mean, people, like I said, even my son doesn't even listen to the children's music anymore, has been logging on and listening almost every day at, okay, yeah, you've listened to a lot of them. Thanks, so Deborah. Just, yeah, let's, let's connect after this. I'll connect with you after this about that. Thank you. Uh, as far as ad messaging for events, it is, is going to be tricky. Um, we work with the, the Gilroy Garlic Festival and they had to cancel this year. Um, but if we were to continue with that, we probably wouldn't have advertised until after the shelter in place is over. And then when you do advertise, be ahead of the safety issue. Let people know what you're going to be doing for safety, how that's going to be um, handled, all of that. But it, it's going to be a little tricky. I think events are going to be one of the hardest hit things because it's people coming together and all they've been telling last month is stay away from each other. Um, so it's going to be a little tricky. I, I think a lot of the, the virtual concerts, the virtual things are, are there's going to be more of those coming out. So just keep your eyes on what's happening. Um, if there's any industry data um, that may help with that. Um, but it, it's going to be a tricky, tricky one this year for sure. The event, um, like Angela, I know with the, the wedding photography, um, my dad has a catering company. He's really, really impacted right now because of that too. Yeah, I do think at some point, Brittany, people will want to come out and will want to go to things like that, especially if they're already fans of events like your concert series. Um, so maybe it just becomes a limited access. Like it can't just be everybody coming. Like you have to buy or reserve tickets in advance and you have seats uh, and they're spread apart. Um, it's not ideal. It's not what we are used to. But like we said earlier, like the world is probably not going to be the same ever again. At least some things will never be the same again. Um, and it will take years for people to get past um, this safety concern, especially because I've been hearing on the news that this might happen again next year, which just means that the, the culture of safety is going to last longer. So like what you're already doing with the other events, um, I, and what Jason said too, I, I definitely wouldn't market an event until you know for sure that the world will be open. Um, but I do think it's there's still a place for in-person events, and especially for people who already love them. And just like Jason said again, messaging strategically and making sure that you're ahead of the game, um, be prepared for all the possible questions that you might get and the possible feedback. You know, one of the challenges is that um, as we have to rethink events, it's not just rethinking the event, how you can host it, but it's really rethinking the business model. 
because all of a sudden you cannot generate the revenue, you cannot generate uh, the, the same crowds and, and everything has to shift. So there is a lot of uh, unknown uh, from that side. Any other questions from folks uh, on the call? Um, just a quick question. This is something I've been running into figuring out best ways of doing things like closed captioning and other ways of making webinars and things. We're still fighting it, still trying to most affordable way for not to make closed captioning available on webinars for people that are coming in on live stream, right? I mean, after, if it's not live, I can put it on Facebook, I know YouTube, they've all got AI systems. I'll help you in an SVP. They are, thank you, honey. Okay, thank you, I got it. <laughs> my, uh, my tech helper. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, my headphones turned off, I guess, apparently. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but uh, so I was gonna say is, do you have suggestions of, I mean, for live streaming, right? I know afterwards there's, YouTube has great AI that does really great job of putting it on. And I know on Zoom, like you can pay for smartphone to type in, in closed caption when you have the professional account, because I did that once. But does anybody have any other suggestions that are more affordable for like, you know, nonprofit groups for doing webinars? Great question. I yeah, I wish I had an answer on that. I'm not sure on the live component of it. I mean, like obviously said, YouTube and all that, you can upload files or they do their AI. Um, but I don't know of anything in the live field. Um, I would think there has to be something though. ADA is so important now and it's being really pushed through websites and such. You would think it would be a feature that was more readily I've available. I've been looking for like two weeks and spending a ridiculous amount of time trying to find something that's affordable that's not, you know, a dollar a minute type thing. And I haven't found mm -hmm. anything yet. Have or, like, you looked incredibly... into, have you looked into Crowdcast? They actually give a nonprofit discount. It's a, a lot but, of the webinars that I've been watching are on there and we're actually talking, we're gonna probably go with them for them. Okay. Uh, I've looked at Telenet, I've looked at them. I, mean, I have an idea. So I've worked to help us okay. with, um, I, I think Olivia is still on the call. Um, you know, I we're going to put all the, the slides from Articulate Solutions on, on the city's website uh, to, and share it with folks that were not able to join us. They can either listen to the webinar or they can go to the slides. Maybe one of the things that we can do collectively is populate additional resources like that whether it's different yeah. platforms, a, a range of affordable platforms. Um, so certainly send us your ideas and we'll start populating those. And always feel free to great, share. We're trying to find something. Feel free to share your thoughts with, uh, with us, the city side. Um, you know, we have a, a really wonderful communications team that's working really hard. And then we have different aspects of the city that is doing their own communications to their audiences, but always welcome your feedback. Any and other- Do we have an ASL person in, in Morgan Hill? I'm for, sorry? Do we have an ASL person in Morgan Hill? A uh, sign language, ASL. Right. Uh, no. Oh my God, could you sign for sign language? Yeah, I, can't I know. Um, fast enough for interpreting. I'm thinking about it. I, I don't know if Michelle is- um, so I called the Gallaudet University and they said they had somebody for me, but then they never got back to me and we're trying to have, because we're going to be having professional people coming on to webinars we're doing with Magical Bridge and Thinking Autism and we want people to be able to ask, uh, if they're nonverbal, to be able to ask questions of our, yeah. our um, hosts, I mean our, our panelists, well yeah, I guess that was, you know, uh, and we, we want to make sure we're having every, everybody's, at, in trying to address as many people as possible. Because like I said, it, it blew up. I mean, I, we put it out one day and noticed and we had like 100 people respond and about 80 people online at one time. Which so, I learned the hard way. It's not easy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations on your webinar, guys. Just to we'll offer this, usually from the city side, we have it on our information that if people need uh, uh, special uh, resources, participate in the meeting to let us know. And I know that in the past we have uh, provided technical assistance for folks, whether it's right. whether it's uh, a way that they can uh, uh, magnify the, the audio. Uh, but Michelle, is there any other resources from the city side, sign language and otherwise? Not that I'm aware of. Um, 
you know, we, we may have a teammate who knows American Sign Language, um, but not at a level that they can translate for organizations and do that. They just may know it like summer bilingual. And we haven't received requests for that at council meetings or anything like that, right? No, no, not so far. If we did, then we'd have to reach out to a resource and pay somebody to come in and provide translation and sign language like we do when we get requests for Spanish or other languages. Right. Um, so definitely an opportunity for folks to think about their value proposition. It's never too late to create a brand and to, to get uh, uh, adapted and, and acquainted with technology uh, and definitely find a way to get your message out in a way that makes sense to the, your, the audience. Um, so taking some of those really good uh, pieces of information, your slides are great. Any other questions as, as we are approaching uh, noon? Just want to make sure we're respectful of the uh, time schedule. Um, I, have a question. I do. I have a question. Um, it's Olivia here. Um, quick question. This is a very general one. Uh, for the city of Morgan Hill, I do the social media. And um, what would be your general, just general tips on how to increase your following on both, both platforms, Facebook and Instagram? I know that both of them are different and are targeted to different audiences. One of the things that I was doing for Instagram was taking photos of, you know, um, um, I guess iconic sites in Morgan Hill. And I'm not sure if I should continue that now with the COVID-19, like people have mentioned, you know, whether it's, you know, I, I don't want to be insensitive, but you have also mentioned about just keeping everything positive and people, you know, um, in a positive, uh, I guess, mode. So I just wanted to get your general thoughts on basically just how to increase uh, your following on both platforms. That's a really great question, Olivia. Um, I think you as a city have a unique position um, to really unite your community on social media and that's a great way to boost engagement and following. Um, hashtags are really important. If, you're, if your target audience is Morgan Hill residents, then I would start by following other Morgan Hill residents. It's just as important um, to engage with people as the city of Morgan Hill as it is to get people to engage with you. So it's not enough to just post and have a bunch of hashtags and then let it sit for two days. It's actually strategic and wise for you to spend at least the first 20 to 30 minutes after a post kind of monitoring the engagement on that post. If somebody comments, respond. Um, and I would say if they, if they are a, a Morgan Hill resident, which you can usually tell if you go check out their feed, um, follow them back and comment or like um, one of their photos. That way it shows that they're getting a human interaction with their city. Um, it doesn't have to be from Olivia, it's from City of Morgan Hill. So you do also have to be aware that you're, you're representing your brand, your city's brand. Um, but I think it's totally doable. Even just say if somebody comments on an iconic spot, let's say you post a picture of the spider on the, on the garage, on the fourth street parking garage. Um, you can talk, you can just talk about the history of that piece that it's an art piece made from old car parts. I know all this because I think it's really cool and I used to park there a lot but that's a really cool thing that you could feature that people will feel inspired like this is part of my Morgan Hill identity and I love this about Morgan Hill. T uh, tap into that emotional connection that people have with your city and encourage them like I, like on when I post um, for my business I'll say double tap if you agree with this which is just a, on Instagram is a phrase that means like the photo people who are on Instagram frequently know that when you double tap the image that it automatically likes the photo that's a call to action that you can then track and measure and um, that's an engagement booster so even if it, even if you're not trying to get people to come out and go to these sites you're you're encouraging them to engage with their identity in the city and I think that is going to boost morale in your community and can grow your following. Wow, that was a really good way to kind of <laughs> end this in a, in a really uh, nice, um, with a really good highlight. I'm actually taking that back and I'm thinking about our city side, not just Choose Morgan Hill, but the city's communication. So thank you for that. Very good. Any other final questions or final thoughts as we're wrapping up? Just thank you. I mean, it's had some really good information that I, you know, I've been kind of so focused on between scouting and the webinars. Uh, 
the other and the masks and stuff, I kind of haven't been thinking about my my pages at all. That has this is a disaster my site. Um, and <laughs> just kind of giving me some ideas. I mean, even with photography, I've been working on photography, not so much my my site at all. So uh, yeah, thank you. And Angela, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. I'm doing a photo workshop next weekend for scouting. So yep. uh, I took I went to the backyard to take pictures of my flowers and bees because I can't really go around and take pictures of people. Do it. So, like, <laughs> Do it. Back your photography. <laughs> um, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Well, you can still you. do that. Please do that. Please share pictures around from Morgan Hill. I mean, I'm not getting out right now because I'm having to really isolate myself from everybody because my health issues. So please, from Morgan Hill, I love seeing stuff. Or, you know, um, I know when people have the rocks and this, I didn't have my, my camera. I, great photographer I am left my memory card at home but my camera with me when I was on the one walk I've been on and I missed out on some really great pictures of the rocks and the little plaques of people leaving on their wall that's wonderful things to take pictures of and share with everybody because those are things our kids are helping make I mean I, we were on a walk and we found a bunch of little tiles that my iPhone did a really bad job taking a picture of my real camera um so <laughs> it's not great but those would be great things to take pictures of and post and show what people in the community are doing I think that's great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Jason, Angela, thank you for your time today. Thank you for volunteering uh, this very valuable time that you have. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, we'll be posting this on our website. And definitely anybody that has additional resources that you think would be valuable to the business community, especially. Edith, you went mute on us. <laughs> Great. It was wonderful. It was a really good speech. I believe it. I yeah. can tell. I can <laughs> tell. Imagine that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone.